This video is going over a problem from the Building Java Programs book. We're going to be using the Practice It website, and this is chapter 8, which is about classes. And self-check number 16 is called Point Client, and this is a fairly sophisticated example. Um, so this is the output that they want us to achieve, and they've already created a lot of code here. And before you get too freaked out about all the code here, all this second function here, this is all given to you. And this is actually the class. And they don't want you to modify this. So first of all, let's start by taking a look at what this class has. Okay, this is an important thing. Um, so inside the, the, the point class, uh, so there's an X and a Y member variables. Okay, so these are, again, these are not local variables. These are variables which only get created when someone calls new point. Okay, and these member variables can be referred to anywhere inside this class by either just the name x and y or ideally I would always tell my students to use this.x and this.y to be clear that they're the member variables. Alright, so what we've got here, oh, in fact I'll go ahead and start labeling these for you. So th these are the member variables. Okay, now we're going to have the constructors. So in this case, we've got two different constructors, okay? You can tell a constructor because it uses the same name as the class, okay? And more importantly, probably, there is no return type, right? Normally, you would have like something like int or something in here to tell you what the return type is. Constructors do not have a return type because they are going to return that class, okay? And uh, there's two different constructors, a null constructor and then a constructor with an X and a Y. So why are there two different ones? Well, it's because... Sometimes you don't really care what the object starts out with because you're going to set it later. So in that case, they have set location 0, 0. And what is set location? Let's go look for that because that is not a Java function. That is another member variable here, set location. Takes an x and a y and it sets the this x and this y. And so you notice here that this is using what I would all suggest people do use is this dot. And that's because that's the only way they can refer to it because these variables are named the same thing as the member variables. All right, so we can set it to zero, zero, or we can take the x, y and pass that in. So those are our two constructors. Okay, now um, I'm going to skip down here because the next thing I usually talk about are getters and setters. Okay, so here's the getters. So Rather than accessing X and Y directly, let's take a look. Are they public? They actually are public. So you don't actually technically need to use get X and get Y, but they you really should make them private. Okay, and then that you would have to get X and Y. And then we have the setters. Okay, so first is what you would expect, set uh, the X and Y. Uh, we've already looked at this one, but you can individually set X and individually set Y. Okay, and then we've got the two string here. Let's go back up and we've skipped a couple things in here. So they've got distance from origin and distance. So eh, it's kind of a hard to call you call it a mutator, I guess. It's not really it's it's not gonna actually gonna mutate anything. It's a it's a computation. Um but um Let's just call it a member function, okay? <laughs> Which is the generic name for all of these things, but since it's not one of the getters or setters. Uh, so it computes the distance from origin. How does it do that? It uses the mathematical function um, x squared plus y squared, and then you take the square root of that. That computes the distance. So it computes the distance from a point here, or computes it from the origin and it just it does the exact same thing except it just creates a new point. So this new point here rel working relies on this setting the location as zero zero. Okay. And let's go jump back down here to the two string. So two string will build a string that puts parens around x comma y. Okay now here is a classic mutator. Translate. Okay, so it moves the point by an x and a y offset. Alright, so that's what this class is about. And now let's take a look at the uh, point client class. So this is another really standard structure you need to get used to. So you've got a class here, which is the object, and then you've got a client class here, and they just call it point client, which actually creates and calls the object. 
Okay, so what does it th this thing have to do? Um, so they give you the, the example here. They want you to print out what the x and y are for p1 and p2. So we're going to have to set that up. Print out the distance of the origin, and then print out the new distance, uh, p, uh, new x, y. Uh, there must be a translate in here too, right? Because it went from 8, 2 to 9, 4. So um, yeah, it's a translate. All right, so let's figure out. Construct two new points. So at this point, people are still a little bit confused about how you create new point objects. First, let's think about how we create integers, right? So you just say int a, right, equals 5, something like that. And then we also learned that we could do a string. OK, a string is actually an object, but it does not use the standard object uh, syntax. OK, so for all other full objects, what we have to do is we have to provide the name of the, uh, the the class, okay? So int and string, those are both data types. Well, so is point, okay? So let's double check. That's the name of our, yeah. So the class is called point, okay? So when I put point in here, the compiler has to look up, gee, is that a data type I know about? Is it int? Is it string? Those are built in? No, okay, well, it's point. That means it's got to go out and find something that says public class point. Okay, so that's the name of the data type, just like int or string. And then we give it a name, let's call it p. Oh, actually, we need point p1 and p2, right? Point p1 equals new, okay? So just like when you, um, uh, well, actually, it's, 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 it's actually new. So before, we haven't had to always call new. Uh, well, there were a couple of cases you learned where, like, random, you have to do a new random, okay? This is uh, like that. So whenever you're going to create an object that you have defined or somebody else has defined, you have to have the new and then class. And this is a calling a constructor. Okay. So we have two choices for constructors here. We can either create the null constructor here, or we can create the constructor passing in an x, y. I'm going to actually do both just to give you the full experience here. So I'm going to create new point. That creates it at, at 0, 0, okay? And then I'm going to actually uh, set the x and y. p1.setx of, we need uh, point 0.1 is 8 and 2, right? So, so I set the x as 8, p1.sety as 2, okay? I'm going to do it the easy way in the next one. Point p2 equals new point. And then we're going to use the constructor form that includes the x and y here, right? So x and y. So we're going to pass in the variables, scroll up, uh, 4 and 3. OK, so this is equivalent to doing all of this stuff separately, OK? So we've created a point p1 and p2. And now we need to actually display those, OK? So they've started us off here. P1 equals dot, dot, dot. So how do we do that? Well, let's, we, we're going to do string concatenation. So we'll, let's start out with a plus. P1 is, and then we need this paren x, y, per, close paren. Now, there's two ways you could do this. You could use, there's a get x and a get y here, OK? But notice that there's also a two string here. And this two string does the same kind of thing. So you could do, I'll just start off. I'm not really going to do it because it's going to be too much work. Uh, eh, I guess I should show you just for complete clarity. Okay, we're going to build this manual. P1 is open paren plus um, p x plus comma space plus p y plus close brackets, close brace. Uh, OK, that's one way to do it. But boy, I think I'm going to do it the easier <laughs> way here. So I'm going to just do p2. I'll, I'll go ahead and say dot two string. That's actually not necessary, because when you have p2, it'll automatically try to call two string on it. All right, we can we can go back and try that, too. Um, I'll go ahead and make a note of that. OK, so then it's going to display the distance from the origin. So the distance of the origin is, so we know we need string concatenation. And then we need to get the 
distance from the origin. So let's go take a look at those functions. We got distance from origin and distance from point. Okay, so in this case, we want distance from origin. So we're going to call p1 dot distance from origin. Okay, and then we need to translate p1 and p2. Okay, so let's review how does the translate. So it takes a dx and a dy. Okay, so that's p1 dot translate. What's the x difference between four? Oh, sorry, um, eight to nine. That's delta x of one. And then from y being 2 to 4, that's a delta y of 2. Okay. Similarly, we want a p2 dot translate, and we're going from 4 to 3, so that's negative 1. And we're going from 3 to 13, that's positive 10. Okay, so that should do the translations. And now, hey, we can take advantage of doing this p1. Too. So here I'm taking advantage of the fact that when when the compiler uh, tries to convert this p2 object into a string, it knows that it's going to just try to look up the two string. And again, this is why you got to call it two string and not something else. Okay, not a different case. You've got to use two string. Okay. All right. So let's take a look and see if that worked for us. So you got to leave the the function in there. Don't want to modify it. Okay. So that passed all of the tests. So let's review again. What was this problem about? This problem is about a fairly sophisticated example of full uh, class creation. You didn't actually have to modify, it, but it shows you a full class and um, using all of those class methods. So we're going to use the constructor. We're going to use the mutators. We're going to use the two strings. So we're calling all of those um, functions and passing in the arguments. I think maybe the constructors is one of the interesting points, understanding how what's the difference between a null constructor, or uh, passing in a constructor with arguments here. Um, I think it's interesting how you can just call p1, and it'll automatically call the two string, and that works. Okay. Um, let's try a couple examples here. What happens if this two string, you, let's say you, called it capital two string. Let's see what happens. So now what happens is because I renamed it, so it's not the standard two string, Java tried to call the standard two string, couldn't find it. So instead it just used the default, which is to spit out this hexadecimal number for its address. So that's why you've got to have it be the right thing. Let's go back and change that two string. Um, and let's see what else is interesting about this. So we call translate uh, using the getters. We're using the setters. Oh yeah, I also wanted to point out. So <laughs> because this thing didn't do private, you can actually go in here and say p1 dot x equals eight. Let's try that. I think I think the parens are fine, unnecessary, but should be fine. Yeah, it actually works. And you can go in here and say, instead of get, get x, get y, we just do p1.y. Okay, let's try that. So when you put public for these memory variables, that allows someone to access them directly. If I change this to private, actually, let's do just do one of them at a time so we can see what the, the error is like. So when we change it to private, um, oh, interesting. Even though it's private x, it still let me do it. Interesting. I think that's a bug in practice that that shouldn't be happening. But you almost generally want to make them private to force the user to um, to use the get x, get y, the get the getters and the setters, right? You don't want them to access it directly because that prevents you from ever changing your implementation. All right, so if you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. I do have a complete curriculum with all the chapters of building Java programs and a lot of these practices.